Hey, welcome back. I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee and today I'm going to show you how to factor trinomials. The first thing I want to do is do a quick little review of what happens when you multiply two things that look like this. They're called binomials. In my class, they like doing it with the boxes, so I'm going to use the boxes for this review. We take the 3x plus 2, put it on one side of the box, the 4x plus 5 and put it on the other side of the box, multiplying out. 4 times 3 is 12. x times x is x squared. 4x times 2 is 8x. 5 times 3x is 15x. And 5 times 2 is 10. When you combine these things, you will end up with 12x squared. That comes from right here. And then you need to combine these middle pieces because they have same like terms. So that's going to be 15x plus 8x, which is going to be 23x. We've got to remember where they come from because that's important for the factoring. 15x and 8x is 23x, and then you have the plus 10. Let's pretend we didn't just do that. Do 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 parallel universe. And what we're going to do is now factor the 12x squared plus the 23x plus the 10. One of the reasons I wanted to use the boxes to multiply is because I'm going to use the boxes for the factoring. And what I know is going to go in the boxes is what I'm given inside that trinomial. So the 12x squared will go here, and the 10 will go in the last box. But the tricky part of this is trying to come up with the numbers that are going to combine to be that 23x. Now you got to remember you didn't just do it. This would be a brand new problem you're looking at for the first time. There is a way to figuring that out. Multiply those two together and you get 12 times 10, that's 120. Put that in the top part. Then you take the 23 and you put that in the bottom part. And what we are looking for is exactly what we need for these boxes is two numbers whose product is 120, but whose sum is 23. Again, they multiply to be 120, but they add to be 23, so it's kind of a little riddle. Well, I do know they have to multiply to be 120, so I'm going to do a little bit of scratch work. I know I need to know the factors of 120, so I'm going to take 120, and figure out all the different ways you can make 120. Now most teachers list this out in pairs. I'm going to write it a little bit differently. I know that I need 1, and when I take 1, I'll go times 120. And look how far, I'm putting them far apart because I'm going to build this list of factors coming in from the outside. So then I don't have to think about this too much. 1, and then I have 2, and that would be 60. 2 times 60 equals 120. I'm looking for pairs that add up to 23. So far, I don't have them. The 1 and the 120 would add up to 121. The 2 and the 60 would add up to 62. I could use a 3. 3 goes into 120 40 times. That's also not adding up to 23. I could use a 4. That would be 30. 4 plus 30 is 34. That is not 23, but we're getting closer. Do you guys see how that's working? Then we're going to go to 5. 120 divided by 5 is 24. So that's not working. I meant to change colors here, but I forgot to grab the other pen. Sorry, I'm just kind of focused. All right, so 5 and 24 doesn't add up to 23. So let's try 6. That would be 6 and 20. That doesn't add up to, I mean, it multiplies to be 120, but it doesn't add up to 23. So then you need to keep going. And after 6, I tried an 8. I took 120 and divided it by 8, and I got 15. And yeah, that's just kind of how it works sometimes. There it is. Those two things added together would equal 23. So this would be an 8, and this would be a 15. Those are the two numbers. So I'm going to put an 8x here, and I'm going to put a 15x here. 
because they have to add up to 23x. Okay, scratch work aside. Once you have all the boxes filled out, this part, the next part's kind of fun. You're gonna factor up and out. What I mean by that is I am going to factor this line and this line, meaning I'm gonna pull out the I'm gonna pull out a common factor. It's called the greatest common factor, but most people will just go for it without knowing what it's called. So look at the 12x squared and the 8x. What is the largest thing you can divide out of both of those? Well, 12 and 8 can both be divided by 4, and there's an x in each one of them. So 4x is the common factor that I can pull out that direction. 15x and 10, the largest thing I can pull out of there is a positive 5. Now, I'm going to factor up. Looking at the 12x squared and the 15x, even though I've highlighted it over twice, looks a little muddy, but here we go. <laughs> I'm going to take out a 3. 12 goes into 3, or 12, 3 goes into 12, and 3 goes into 15, and I can pull up an x. And put, what can I take out of an 8x and a 10? That's going to be just the 2, not the x. So here is our answer. We have 3x. This is a positive 2. That's a positive 5. So we have 3x plus 2 and 4x plus 5. When you are factoring, you are breaking your answer apart back into what you started with when we multiplied. The problem is, is you don't know what these middle pieces are going to be all the time. That's one, that's how to do it. Let's work some examples so you can see some more problems. If you're in my class, all of this stuff needs to be in your notes. And I'm gonna be going through it quickly. You're gonna factor 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. We start by making the boxes. There's more than one way to do it. You don't always have to use boxes, that is true. Most of the people in my classes dig the boxes, so I'm gonna put the boxes in. The two x squared goes here. The 12 goes in the last box. And we don't know what the middle boxes are gonna be, but we do know that they have to combine to be 11x. So to play around and figure out what those numbers are going to be, you start with this. We know the 11 is going to go in the bottom. What you put on the top will be the coefficient of that x squared term times the constant. So the first number, don't worry about the x's, we're ignoring them for right now. The first number you see times the last number you see if everything is in order. So 2 times 12 is 24. And you need to come up with the two numbers that when you multiply them give you 24, but when you add them give you 11. Do factoring on a scratch paper if you want to, but those two numbers are 8 and 3. So here I'm going to put 8x, and here I'm going to put 3x. We need to factor out and up. So we're going to put numbers in these spots right now. Looking at this first line and going in this direction, the largest thing I can take out of a 2x squared and an 8x is 2x. The largest term I can factor out of a 3x and a 12 going in this direction is going to be a 3. Now factor up. The largest thing I can pull out of a 2x squared and a 3x, there won't be any numbers, it's just going to be an x. Factoring up, the largest thing I can take out of an 8x and a 12 is the number 4. 2 can come out of both of those two, but 4 will work as well. You have to use the largest number. 6 goes into 12, but not into 8. So our final answer, and these are all positive, so our final answer is x plus 4 multiplied times 2x plus 3. This is now completely factored. Example 2, we're going to factor 3x squared plus 16x plus 5. For this video, I'm keeping everything positive. I want you just to learn the moves 
to do factoring when all of the numbers are positive. When negatives get introduced, it gets to be a little trickier. I'm going to make another video for that. When the video is done, I'll link it. You'll see it. Okay, so make our box. Three X squared goes here. Five goes here. We don't know what's gonna go in the middle two boxes until we do this. Now, whether you write it out or do it in your head, that's up to you. But I do know that I need to uh, multiply the three times the five for the top. That's gonna be 15. And it has to combine, those two things have to combine to be 16 X. So I'm just gonna put a 16 there. So I need two numbers that when I multiply them together are 15, but when I add them are 16. Well, those numbers are 15 and one. 15 times one is 15. 15 plus one is 16. All right, so we have 15 X here and 1x there. You could just put an x. I'm going to put 1x just to keep things very clear. Now we're going to do what we did before. We're going to need to factor numbers out here and here. And we're going to need numbers factored up here and there. So going across, it doesn't matter how you do this. I just do it always the same way. Going across first, this first line, 3x squared and 15x, what I can pull out of there is a 3x. On the bottom, I have an 1x and a 5. I literally can't pull anything out of there, and this is why this one might feel a little tricky. When you get to that point where it looks like you can't, they don't have any common things at all, then you're taking out a 1, because that'll always work. You gotta have something there, it's not zero. Well, I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you why. Then we're going to factor up, and you're going to be able to take out an x here. See, another way you might have already picked up on it is that these, these boxes on the inside are the answers. So you already have a 3x. The answer is 3x squared. So what had to go here? An x. That's another way of thinking about it. And if that was confusing, let's look at it this way. What has to go here? The answer is 15x, and you already know one of that little factors is 3x. That has to be a 5. And let's just check and see if the multiplication works for everything else. 3x times x is 3x squared. 1 times x is 1x. That's what I meant why you don't have a 0 here. Because this number times this number has to equal 1x. 3x times 5 is 15x, and 1 times 5 is 5. That all works. All right, so now we have our answers and everything is positive. x plus 5 times 3x plus 1. All right, one more. One more, because there could be something that comes up that you might think looks simple but it could be tricky. It, All right, we still need to get our boxes. All right, what goes here is x squared. And what goes in the last box is 35. Now, I'm going to do things the same way I did them before. But if there's no number in front of the x squared, what you really have here is a 1. Remember, the one becomes invisible sometimes. So we follow the same pattern. The coefficient of the squared term times the constant is what goes in the top box. So here it'll be 35. 1 times 35 is 35. Oh, there's a 12 on the bottom. So I need two numbers that multiply to be 35, but when you combine them are 12, and that would be 7 and 5. So I'm going to put the 7x here and the 5x there. Now we do need to do some factoring. When I start factoring that first line, I have an x, 1x squared and a 7x. I can only take an x out of those. And down here, when I have a 5x and a 35, the only thing I can factor out of that is a 5. Now you can factor up 
I did a, those a couple like that, but I'm also can use my answers to come up with what these numbers are. What do you have to multiply times x to get an x squared? Another x. What do you multiply times x to get 7x? 7. And then just check and see if everything else works. Is 5 times x 5x? Yes, it is. Is 5 times 7 35? Yes, it is. So here are our factors, x plus 5 and x plus 7. If you are in my class, you have work to do right now. You're going to need to practice these, and I'll be having it on the next notebook check, so don't skip this next part. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love a subscribe. That would be awesome. Bye.